Okay, question 12. This is where we start getting more towards our problem solving questions. So this is where we need to really start like applying what we think. So or applying what we know. Okay, the graphs of g of x, which is a cubic, and h of x, which is a parabola, touch when x equals 1. So basically this is a point of intersection. It th then says, therefore the tangent to the curve of g at x equals 1 is also the tangent to the curve at h. So it's basically saying you have these two graphs, they touch each other, right? So at that point they're going to have the same coordinates. But also if you draw a tangent at that point, it'll be the same for both those graphs. Okay, so it's basically talking about elements of equality between these two functions. Then it says determine the coordinates of this point of contact of the two graphs. So now we know that the point of contact, we know that its x value is going to be 1. That's given, right? So we know that. But we need to use the information that's given to help us. So let's start by saying, well, we know at the point of intersection, so at x equals 1, we know that g3 minus ax squared plus 6 is going to equal 2x squared plus bx plus 3. Okay, we know that. They told us that. So let's sub in the 1. So it becomes 1 to the 3 minus a1 squared plus 6 equals 2, 1 squared plus b2, 1 plus 3. Okay, so let's just solve this out. So this is going to be negative a plus 7. This is going to be b plus 5. So then we effectively have here... If we do this in terms of B, I'm just going to say, or we can do it in, yeah, let's do it in terms of B. B equals negative A, right, bring that across, plus 2. Okay, that's what B equals. So that's all good and well, but now we have two unknowns. We know that when we have two unknowns, we need two equations, because that's how simultaneous equations work. So we have that. What other information do we have? It says the tangent to the curve at G at x equals 1 is also the tangent to the curve at h at x equals 1. When you hear the word tangent, you should be thinking straight line, you should be thinking gradient. When you think the word gradient, you should be thinking the first derivative. So we know that the gradient at the point x equals 1 of this graph equals the gradient of that graph. So firstly, let's go get the gradient. What is the gradient? It's my first derivative. So let's get that first. Okay, there's that. Let's get the derivative or the gradient of the second graph. Okay, at x equals 1, we know that these two gradients are going to equal each other because their tangents equal each other, right? And if their tangents equal each other, we know their gradients have to equal each other. So let's then sub in 1. Right, and let's see now if we can actually solve a bit further. So that becomes 3 minus 2a, 4 plus b. Right, let's do this in terms of b again. So bring that across, negative 1 minus 2a equals b. So now we have two equations and we have two unknowns. That's fantastic. Let's equate them. Okay, so making 1 equal to 2 because they're both in terms of b. So negative a plus 2 equals negative 1 minus 2a. Bring that over, that becomes 3. Bring that over, that becomes minus, that becomes minus a. And a equals negative 3. So now solve for a. Okay. Now, you could be thinking to yourself, well, why is this, why am I doing this again? Why am I doing this again? Like, now I found A and now I can find B. What am I doing? Remember, if you can find A and B and then you sub in 1, you've then found the point of intersection. So finding A and B helps us find that point of intersection. So we found A. Let's now find B, right? We know that B equals negative A plus 2 from number 1 which is just 3 plus 2 equals b, so b equals 5. Okay, right, so now we've got a and b. So now all we need to do is we need to sub back into one of our original equations, you can use either of them, and put in the a and the b values, sub in the x value of 1, and then you can get the y value, which gives me the coordinates of the point of intersection, which is what I want. 
So I'm just going to do it over here, and I'm going to do it into the, into the parabola, not because it's um, there's any specific reason, but just because it's easier from a from a um, substitution perspective. So we know that this is what the parabola is because we solved for b already. Let's now get h of one. So sub that in, and that gives you ten. So the coordinates of the point of intersection is 1 and 10. And we are done, right? So it's very important that you think this through very methodically, right? Yes, it seems very daunting, but I literally said, what, what have they given me? What are they telling me? Keep saying that to yourself. Go back to your basics. Right, we have one question left. Let's finish.